Approximately 258 million years ago, life on Earth suffered its darkest occurrence yet. The Permian-Triassic extinction event wiped out 96% of all marine species on the planet. Terrestrial life suffered a similar diminishment of diversity, with 70% of land-dwelling vertebrates dying out as well. Intense volcanic activity that lasted around 2 million years, and meteor impact events are among the leading theories explaining this pivotal catastrophe. But this video won't focus on these causes. Rather, we will explore a species which impressively survived through it all. Lystrosaurus was a genus of dicynodont therapsids that first appeared before the PT extinction, in the late Permian period. Like other dicynodonts, Lystrosaurus had no teeth, save for two tusk-like canines. Supported by a herbivorous diet, they likely used their robust beak to tear away pieces of vegetation. And evidence of wear on their tusks could mean that they used these modified teeth to root out vegetation as well. Interestingly, the forelimbs of Lystrosaurus were more developed than the hindlimbs. This unusual trait suggests that this group of animals were adept burrowers, a quality which may have aided them in their survival of the Permian-Triassic extinction. Now this is the part of Lystrosaurus' story that is especially notable. With a huge portion of life on Earth wiped out, including many large terrestrial predators and herbivorous competitors, Lystrosaurus was able to flourish and diversify into many new species across the supercontinent of Pangaea. The members of these species were so abundant that at one point in the early Triassic, Lystrosaurus accounted for up to 95% of all terrestrial vertebrates. This was the first and only time that a single genus of land animal has dominated the earth in such a way. So how was this pig-sized herbivore able to survive the Permian-Triassic extinction and go on to thrive in the early Triassic? A few theories have been presented, but none have yet become widely accepted. One possible explanation is that certain Lystrosaurus species may have been semi-aquatic. This very lifestyle could have helped them survive the PT extinction since freshwater lakes and rivers were perhaps less affected than marine and terrestrial ecosystems. A similar explanation has been proposed to explain how crocodilians survived the famous Cretaceous Paleogene extinction 66 million years ago. Another theory suggests that Lystrosaurus's barrel chest and short internal nostrils, among other features, aided them to obtain enough oxygen in the depleted atmosphere that was left in the wake of the PT extinction. However, other species of dicynodonts that were lost in this event had similar chest sizes to Lystrosaurus suggesting that this trait alone may not have been the cause of their success. Finally, some Lystrosaurus species were less specialized than others. In the quickly changing environment during the PT extinction event, these less specialized species would be more able to adapt to new conditions. The specialized Lystrosaurus species, on the other hand, were unable to survive and could not persist into the Triassic. Now back to Pangaea for a moment. This supercontinent's existence can be explained by plate tectonics and the slow movement of land masses over millions of years. While this explanation is widely accepted and well supported today, Lystrosaurus and other prehistoric creatures were an important piece of early evidence in support of the theory. Fossils of Lystrosaurus have been found across Africa, India, and Antarctica. Since Lystrosaurus was in no way able to traverse the vast oceans which now separate these land masses, it is reasonable to assume that they were at one point much closer, if not connected completely. Lystrosaurus was a truly remarkable creature, but despite its dominance, it did not survive past the early Triassic. So now, all we can do is look back and admire what was lost. <laughs>